Welcome back trainers and in this video we're going to be taking a look at our Brawlava and this is going to be the first time I'm actually using this ever here. It's a pretty good IV, don't know what rank it is for the IVs that I do have but man I was very happy with the performance. This thing was amazing. We're going to be pairing it up with my two favorite shadows at the moment. That is going to be Excadrill and Haunter. These things, man, <laughs> this is like constant using these, right? They're so amazing. Excadrill is so damn squishy, but man, oh man, you already know it hits so hard. And same for the Haunter. With that said, it was a great time. Uh, you know, you drop ELO when you use your extra spice. <laughs> oh, it did bring us down horrible. If you didn't see my last video, go check that out when we use Fue Coco. It was crazy. Throw in a Conk Eldor, all of a sudden hit me with an Alakazam. Get the heck out of here with that nonsense. Such a quack. Anyways, in this video, we're going to be uh, you know, a little bit more upbeat. So let's see what we have going on here. That Ampharos goes down by the Shadow Ball Haunter. Let's go. All right, let's see what we have. We're going to be leading with Excadrill the entire time. If you do enjoy my videos and you want to help me out and support me, make sure you do give this a thumbs up. Hopefully you're with family right now and having a good day. All right, so we do have a Jellicent here. And of course, of course it has Ice Beam. Okay, it's not outside the realm of possibility, but of course I never really encounter those. All right, but we did take that matchup. Uh, and we are going to be using Razor Leaf, as you can see here, Seed Bomb, as well as Earth Power. That's a pretty good move to have on it. So we did a lot of damage there with our Razor Leaf. We bring in the Haunter and just straight up farm them down. In comes the Girafferig with that super effective Confusion plus Stab. Down goes the Haunter. We was able to get in one Shadow Claw, or Shadow Punch, I just say. That's all we really needed to do. And then we're landing that drill run. They let it go because they knew it was over. And if you're looking at that score and you see it's really low, yep, that's what happens when you get screwed over, over and over and over again. All right, so we have a good lead here up against Clefable. Now, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, we can let this go. It's still going to hurt more than likely a Meteor Mash here. Yeah, bringing us into the uh, low yellow and now into the red as they did hit us with those quick moves but we farmed them down and we're loaded up on energy here was that a jellicent we've seen there now we want to stay right where we're at and we're actually getting to another dang drill run that's awesome let's go doing a ton of damage they do not want to use that last shield we still have two now we resist this this thing completely unless it does have ice beam because it is going to be normal as well as grass a very um weird type okay so we do have um very unique Pokemon out here. We're taking the win. All right. Yeah. Grass and normal. Isn't that some? All right. So we do have a Pidgeot here. This is great. They're going to be swapping into Quagsire. And, you know, that is a very satisfying thing to Razor Leaf them down. But now we're going to have to deal with the consequences of swapping into our grass. And they can bring in their Pidgeot and essentially just farm us all the way down here. Actually, you know, we're doing a decent amount of damage. Okay, not bad. All right. Uh, but they do have a lot of energy here, and a Brave Bird will pretty much KO. So something wacky happens here. I, they had a lot of energy, right? Now check this out. I don't know what's going on. I would guess that maybe they can't hit their charge move when they want to because they're at 100 energy by now, I would assume. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we can say, oh, look, it's lagging for me. Oh, and it's helping me out. Okay, there we go. There we go. One time out of a thousand. Right. Okay. Oh, and also it made me, uh, it skipped a frame earlier in a battle and uh, something I could have took, but it didn't allow me to because it skipped a frame and I wasn't able to hit the charge move and they hit theirs. So <laughs> you got to love that. Don't think that's a cheat. Obviously, there's always frame skipping. All right, Haunter finishing them off after we do land that drill run. All right, Klotzire coming back for some more action. This is a, obviously a good matchup. This is the reason why I made Excadrill, the shadow one, because of the abundance of these Klotzires that we are seeing here. Because we did have a community day for it, easy to make. Um, it's the catch cup and it's meta. So yeah, you're going to see it pretty much every set, probably every other game. Farming them down, that was great. We are down a shield and they're coming in here with Conk Heldor. Now, oof. Uh, we are going to be weak to that with our uh, grass so, and normal over here. Very odd, right? It's like grass and normal, but it does shut these ghosts down. It's pretty awesome. All right, so shielding up that brutal swing, and they're going to be bringing in their Steelix. We're getting to the Shadow Ball, but not getting to the Shadow Ball. That kind of hurt a lot. Damn, that would have almost one-shotted. So we had to bring in the Excadrill, and of course the Conkeldor is going to destroy us. Now we're weak to fighting. <laughs> what are we going to do? Uh, let's see here. 
Now, our Balava is pretty tanky. As you can see here, it's taking these hits. I was afraid this was going to be a dynamic punch, but it's just a brutal swing. And we take the win with Razor Leaf. Let's go. Let's get it. Next game, we're met with an Excadrill. This is great. Even the Arbrala would not mind going up against that. So we're going to go ahead and swap into it right about now. I mean, they just got it hard countered in the front in the middle. Yeah, I wouldn't stick around either. I would back out too. That's all it is. You don't need to overthink it, folks. This is a rock, paper, scissors game. You can come back from certain situations, but for the most part, that's what it is. I was taking this way too seriously before. Uh, and ever since I started just chilling out with it, still trying, still doing my best, you know, in these games and stuff. But if it destroys my elo, I just don't even care anymore. I did yell today when it frame skipped, when I had my charge move and I would have took that game and it would have been a 5-0. I yelled a little bit and it got scared and ran away. <laughs> I don't like when I do that, but you know, uh, this game is annoying. <laughs> it can make you just rage induced. Farming them down. Wow. Let's go. And we are barely holding on by a thread here, but we do have a charge move. So we're going to go straight for the drill run here. All right. So we're dealing with the fighting and water type. So we can go ahead and go drill run and then swap into our, our Bralova. And they're going to be coming back in here with their Skeledurge. Now, I just have to hope I can razor leaf them down. And we do. Come on, let's go. This thing's a tank. Let's get it. And then we have the seed bomb. All right. And we're taking the win. This thing looks like uh, when it has its wings spread out like a uh, like a carrier. Like those are the jet engines and it's just not itself. You know what I mean? The wings, maybe. All right. <laughs> uh, we have a good old uh, one shot. <laughs> Get one shotted with your uh, stun fisk. Now, of course, the Arbalava is going to love this match up here, but we're not going to go anywhere because if we swap into it, they're going to be bringing in a Charizard out of the blue, right? Right. So we're going to let it go down, bring it in, Razor Leaf them up. They do have energy and they have a Cofagrigus in the back. So we're going to go ahead and swap into our Haunter here as we're just going to be doing extreme damage and able to get to the Shadow Punch, getting their last shield while we're still holding on to two. We're going to go ahead and use one right now, do a little bit more damage here. And now we can finish them off with our, our Bralava, bringing that in to Razor Leaf down and taking the win. I don't even think a Sludge Bomb would have been enough to finish us off there because this thing's so tanky. Next game, we're met with a Drift Blim. All right, so of course, we're going to be going for that Rock Slide here and hitting that immediately. No catch on their end. They could have Magical Fire or Icy Wind. They let it go and we swap into our Bralava. Now, ooh, was that a smart... They lowered our attack plus super effective. I mean, everything is too squishy. So I went, I wanted to preserve the shield as well as my two hard hitters. And it took the hit very nicely. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to the earth power here. But that's also okay because they're not farming up extra. Uh, but I think that it would have been smarter for them to take care of me uh, as soon as possible uh, with that damage I was doing. So they do have a lantern in the back. Unfortunately, our Bralava is down and out for the count. So no razor leafing this thing, but that's still perfectly fine. We're in a great position here with the shields that we do have, the energy that we did accumulate, and we're going to be able to outpace them and then get to that clot sire and then also one shot it. This is why I called this thing sweeper. Literally, look it. I mean, it's amazing. If I, you haven't made an Excadrill, I urge you to make one. This thing's freaking awesome. I just, I mean, I just, woo. I actually just got myself a bar brooch, but of course everything's has, you know, um, frustration. So yeah, they actually go sludge bomb here. I mean, hey, it's all good. And we survive it. Even this thing can survive that as we're still and ground and we take the win. Great. Next game, we're met with a Zygarde. All right. Awesome. This thing is actually pretty fun to use. It's not like, oh, it's garbage. It's actually decent as long as you don't get, you know, matched up with freaking ice or something like that or a fairy you're pretty much duh, done uh, but we're gonna go ahead and shield it up that dragon tail is actually doing a lot of damage and adding up here and we're gonna go for another drill run they're actually catching retreating with energy on that zygarde and catching with the skarmory but the drill run's still doing so much damage to that thing about half of its health still incredible because it is going to be part steel type and that's the way pokemon freaking go works normal's not supposed to hurt ghost ghost not supposed to hurt normal uh, dragon can't touch fairy quite literally it's null and void ground can't hit flying electric can't hit ground but these things are being able to you know touch each other <laughs> in the game uh, because if you had a, like a, a game where you're just completely just doing no damage it wouldn't be called Pokemon Go it'd be Pokemon screwed and stuck and then have to change the mechanics of the game so that's where we're at with all that stuff 
Anyways, I'm sure you all knew that for the most part. And we're bringing in the Haunter. Oh, I screwed this one up. So I should have stayed there, did some more damage with the Haunter, and then bring in the Abralava afterwards. That was a good game. I was laughing because this is RK9 here. It does have Snarl. Um, but I was thinking, I bet you it was going to throw a Fire Fang at me. But no, it's Snarl. Okay. And they're swapping into a Vigoroth. We're going to go ahead and bring in our Haunter here. Uh, it takes a second to get to the Bulldoze, so we know they're not there yet. Plus the resistance, it's amazing. Uh, it is going <laughs> to... We were just talking about this, right? <laughs> That's funny. So we're actually going to Shadow Claw them down here. We're actually shielding up again, though. It's worth the shield. The energy on the Haunter exchange is absolutely worth it. So we're going to go ahead and do that right here. I'm going to go for that Shadow Punch. And Arcanine taking a lot of damage. Ooh, do we want to shield this up? I don't think so. They have Snarl. They're going to take us out immediately. Best to just bring in Excadrill and farm them down here. Uh, we could probably even Razor Leaf them down, to be honest with you. But Excadrill finishing off the job, and that's bad for them. And there's another Skarmory here. Again, you're seeing these around because it is the Catch Cup. And they're generally pretty easy to get. You can get them through Go Battle League rewards and whatnot. And uh, it's... Uh, easy investment if you catch it at a good combat power so they are going to be using up their last shield and retreating and we'll take that win there next game again we're going to be leading with excadrill the entire time carbinks baby let's go this thing is typically extremely annoying to deal with unless you're using like swampert or some crap but <laughs> oh good old excadrill threatens the absolute heck out of it all right, looks like Excadrill is going to have a field day with this team, bringing in their Altaria. We're going to go for the Rock Slide, bring in the Haunter. I, I, I wanted to farm them down, but we're just going to throw that Shadow Punch here. It's going to be better to just take them out instead of using up a shield, although the energy exchange would have been fine, but I still want to hold on to the two shields here. We're going to let the Carbings take out the Haunter. That's fine. We got rid of one of their Pokemon, and we want this realignment here while they're still stuck because the clock is still going because we... Uh, we did swap immediately, but yeah, there you go. The, the clock is up and mine's not. I'm looking at it like, come on now. Uh, the Arbralova, I don't know. Uh, they, yeah, well, we'll take care of it there. There you go. Finish them off. I thought they had a shield left. No, okay. Drilled one, one and done. Bringing in the Arbralova to take out this Carbinks here. Razor leafing it up. We use the shield and we'll farm them down and take that win there. Let's keep it going. Excadrill into... Oh, well, this is a horrible lead. So I don't usually do this, but... I went straight into my hard counter for a fighter. Now we have two Pokemon weak to fighting. So what the hell am I going to do? This. Thank goodness they let that go. If they didn't, I, I would have backed out. So they bring back the Hitmontop. <laughs> Let's go. We need to get a shield. Razor Leaf is, is neutral, but we're going to be taking a lot of damage, especially after they hit their damn triple axle here. So what are we going to do? Well, I bring in the Arbralava and we're going to go ahead and let this first triple axle go. And now they're just doing that much more damage. I figure we're going to just take them down low enough that we can quick move them down quick enough with the Excadrill here, as you can see. Hitting another Triple Axle, and they do have a Sand Slash in the back. Now, we did have a little bit of energy, so we're going to be able to outpace them here. And they are... No, they're not shielded. It's got one shield left. So this is going to be coming down to just quick move damage. We'll shield this up and don't throw charge moves. You want to go quick moves. And there you have it. Pretty awesome Pokemon. Really had a good time using it. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. People want to know where I find my strength at, where I get my strength. I get it from a lot of places. But right now, this morning, I'm getting it from there's not a motherfucker that's up. There's not a car. There's not a person. Everybody's in their bed, sleep, dreading that it's a Monday. Hate it's a Monday. And I'm loving it. I'm loving that. Where everybody's getting weaker, I'm getting stronger. It's not about the running, the swimming, the push-ups, the sit-ups. It's about what those things do for your mentality. You don't get better on the daggone couch. You get better by coming out here and getting the fuck after it every daggone day. Champions aren't found on the podium with their hand up. No. Champions are found in the lab studies. The thousands of hours of hard work when no one's watching. That's what makes the will unstoppable. When you're in here and no one else is, and you're pushing yourself harder than anybody with no one around. No one sees a struggle in here. No one sees a hardship. The early mornings you get up, no one sees any of that. They just see if your hands raised or not. And if it is, oh, what a great guy. Oh, I wish I could be that guy, I wish I could be that guy. But they're not clapping, wishing they could be you at five in the morning when you get out of bed, when it's pissing rain outside to come and train for that hand to be raised. They don't want to be that guy. They just want the glory. And that's the differential of a champion. You know, in adversity, guys, is where you find character. It has everything to do with what time you wake up. 
It has everything to do with how you eat. It has everything to do with how you work out, how you prepare. It has every single thing to do with how you think. And when you want it as bad as you want to breathe, says, I'm willing to make any sacrifice. I'm willing to go through any pain. I'm willing to go through any suffering. I'm willing to go through whatever it takes. So when I get in there and it's me and him one on one, that I guarantee you at the end of it, I won't be the one that surrendered. And if you're going to be the best.